Hello, my name is Marcia Spink. I'm the Associate Director for Policy and Science in the Air Protection Division of EPA Region 3. This is Clean Air Act 101, Module 5, Title 5 Operating Permits under the Clean Air Act. This training is brought to you from the Office of Air Quality Planning and Standards in RTP. This is an overview of the Title V Operating Permit Program. What is the program? It was established by the Clean Air Act Amendments of 1990. One source, one Title V permit. The permit expires after five years, and the Title V permit pays for itself through permit fees. Now, what are the benefits of this permit program? It satisfies the need for a uniform and comprehensive permit system that implements the Clean Air Act. It provides for increased public access to the permit review process, and it provides for additional compliance data and reports. It improves compliance due to consolidation of requirements, and it improves implementation. What we mean by the fact that the Title V permit um, actually improves compliance is that many times when we found a source in violation, we would go to take enforcement and the source would say they didn't know that the requirement applied to them. So by having one permit with all of us stationary sources, Clean Air Act requirements imposed in a single instrument, we avoid the problem of sources saying they didn't know what they were subject to. Who's the permitting authority? Now, the Clean Air Act envisioned that state and local air pollution agencies would issue Title V permits. States become the Title V permitting authority upon final approval by EPA of Title V permit programs consisting of regulations to satisfy 40 CFR Part 70. Until that happens, EPA is the permitting authority under 40 CFR Part 71. Who needs a Title V permit? Major sources need them. That's any stationary source that exceeds potential to emit thresholds for regulated pollutants. The regulated pollutant thresholds are for criteria pollutants greater than or equal to 100 tons per year potential to emit and for hazardous air pollutants greater than or equal to 10 tons per year of one HAP or greater than or equal to 25 tons per year of a group of HAPs. Facilities subject, regardless of size, include those stationary sources subject to new source performance standards, national emission standards for hazardous air pollutants, also known as MAC standards under the 1990 Clean Air Act, sources subject to major new source review and prevention of significant deterioration, and sources subject to the Title IV Acid Rain Program. Who doesn't need a Title V permit? minor sources, whether they be natural miners or synthetic miners. Now, a natural miner means that without any constraints on its hours of operation, type or, or material combusted, the source is naturally below those pollutant thresholds. A synthetic miner means that unless the source had conditions limiting its hours of operation or the type of material processed or combusted, it would have exceeded those thresholds. Exempted area sources under Section 112 MAC standards also do not need a Title V permit, for example, dry cleaners. What makes a Title V operating permit different from pre-construction permits? A Title V permit does not establish any new federal requirements for a facility. Pre-construction permits or new source review permits are required for most new facilities or new and modified units at existing facilities. Now, a Title V permit, once it's issued, will embody most of the pre-construction permit's conditions. What does a Title V permit look like? Well, the permit will identify the subject units and will contain boilerplate text applicable to all sources that need Title V permits. It will identify emission units and facility-wide groups. The federal and state-only enforceable sections will be in the permit, and there'll be a statement of basis or facts and a technical support document associated with the Title V permit. And here's a diagram of what all goes into a Title V permit. A little bit different from that diagram is virtually the same diagram with just federal requirements listed. You've got your SIP, your new source review, your other federally enforceable permit limits, New Source Performance Standards and 111D plans, NESHAPs or MACT, acid rain, stratospheric ozone requirements, and any other federal requirements applicable to a major stationary source will be in its Title V permit. Now, a Title V permit will have emission limitations, operational restrictions, and work practice standards. 
It will also include monitoring testing requirements, record keeping and reporting requirements, and any compliance schedules that the source is subject to. Now, why is Title V important? It's a more useful permit for everyone. As I explained earlier, it's one place where all of a source's Clean Air Act requirements are embodied in a single document. It provides for more compliance information, and there's expanded legal rights and requirements, including rights for more public access and public participation into the permit process. Title V permits house existing SIP requirements and all other applicable federal and state requirements. SIPs are required under Title I of the Clean Air Act and must stand complete on their own. Title V permits are required under Title V of the Clean Air Act. Title V permits may not be used to create, fix, or fill in SIP requirements, and the issue is not federal enforceability. Nothing is made part of the SIP until and unless it goes through the state and federal processes required to codify it at 40 CFR Part 52, pursuant to Section 110 of the Clean Air Act. Now, I will say this. You can have a SIP operating permit program, which is known as a FESOP. Now, a FESOP, which is a operating permit approved under Title I into the SIP, can be used for single source SIP revisions to tighten the SIP for an individual source. SIP requirements cannot be open-ended with the details to be set in Title V permits. SIP revision requests to approve documents or regulations with expiration or sunset dates pose approvability problems. You heard me say earlier that Title V permits expire and have to be reissued every five years. Because the SIP cannot go away or expire, that is why Title V operating permit programs cannot be used to fix or supplement or create SIP requirements in and of themselves. Here are the Title V contacts at EPA. Everyone in each of the 10 regional offices, and here in the Office of Air Quality Planning and Standards, the group leader is Juan Santiago. That concludes Module 5 on Title 5 of Clean Air Act 101.